Hi, I'm Kim. Hi, I'm Connor. And today we're going to talk about autism. Am I? I don't know what you're doing. So, what is autism? Autism is a neurological condition that affects how you process the information around you and how you relate to others. It's a spectrum condition though, so everyone on the spectrum experiences things slightly differently. So if you think of a brain like a cylinder, an autistic brain just has a bit more room in it, which means that there's more room for information to come in, which can be a lot more overwhelming. But you can also use that extra bit of brain to be able to process more information and perhaps achieve more. So how can autism affect your day to day? Well, everyone requires a different amount of support. Some people may need more support in some areas than others. For example, 80% of people on the spectrum experience sensory processing issues. Uh, like for me right now, I've currently got lights that are too much for me, although I am dealing with them, but that's all right. <laughs> I can find lo noises way too loud. Every single noise just feels the same volume all coming at you from every single direction. And it's a constant thing, it doesn't turn off. For example, in a typical day, from the moment you wake up in the morning, how does that pan out? So the first thing that's essential for me, I have to have a shower. If I don't have a shower, I can't continue with the rest of my day. It's all about routine with autism for most people. I have to do the shower because that's the first thing I do every single day. And that pans out, that then allows me to go on to the next thing. Even after my shower, it can then be difficult to go and walk the dog because you've then got to deal with, oh wait, strangers might talk to me. I don't know how those strangers are going to interact with me. They may be a positive interaction. They may try and hurt me. They may shout at me. There's all these uncertainties that can be scary in the day-to-day -day life. So what other kind of situations might you find difficult? Dealing with change is a very interesting one. Even the smallest changes can upset someone on the spectrum that much that it could lead to a meltdown or a shutdown. Could you explain to me what those are? Both of them, first of all, are when you're getting too overwhelmed. It's just how you react to that situation which differs them. So a meltdown tends to be a very physical reaction, uh, like tears is the first thing that happens with me, may start hitting things around me. Whereas a shutdown is a very interesting thing because that's where your body just completely shuts off from the world and goes, oh no, I'm not, I'm not doing this today. So have you got any tips for like, if you're having a meltdown or a shutdown, what would you do? Well, first of all, sometimes you just need to let it happen, unfortunately. Okay. Sometimes they can be delayed from the situation, mm -hmm. so you may be in a stressful situation and then they may happen at a point where you're in a comfortable environment. But when it's actually happening, there isn't much you can do, but I've just learned to do little things like focus on one particular thing, like start counting the tiles on the ceiling or something like that, just so you can give your mind one thing to focus on and one thing only, and that can help bring everything back in and ground it. OK, and what would you say to people that are around you during those times? Sometimes it's as scary having a meltdown as it is seeing the reaction to the people around. People can be really judging when you're having a meltdown because it's not normal behaviour. Especially as you get older, it's more abnormal to start reacting physically to certain situations. So for you, what causes a meltdown or a shutdown? It can be many different things. Sometimes it can just simply be overloaded with things going on, like I've got too much to do and I, I don't know what to prioritise. Other times it can be a sensory problem. I can have too much sensory stimulation going on. I could have some flashing lights, I could have some loud speakers, I could have some pungent smell. Sometimes you can just get out of the situation and then you'll calm down because you're avoiding those sensors. Sometimes you can stick in your earplugs, sometimes you can put on sunglasses. But it's a very personal thing again, it's about working out what's best for you and what best works for you in every single okay. different situation. So that sounds like quite a lot to deal with. How do you go about dealing with issues like this? I have like built up my own little tips and tricks mm -hmm. over time of course. Like Technology is a big help for me, like having instant access to everyone on my wrist or on my phone I can communicate with anyone when I need to. Uh, I can look at where I am in the world on maps and stuff and also having the support of the people around me like my family are incredibly supportive they know exactly what I can deal with what I can't deal with. What other experiences could somebody with autism face? It can literally affect every single area of your life like it only affects me in certain areas but it may affect how you eat how you drink how you dress yourself and that just means that everyone requires their own personalised level of care and support. How might someone who has autism differ from somebody who doesn't? First of all, I think you kind of realise that you're a bit different to everyone else and definitely through the early stages of my life I used to think that it was everyone else that was different and then I realised that, oh no, actually, I seem to be in the minority here. Everyone else behaves in a certain way that I can't quite understand. 
I have all these behaviours, like I get really obsessed with the things I'm interested in, like I'm madly into Disney, for example. That's very much a common thing for people on the spectrum, we all get our little obsessions and special interests. And with that intensity, there's a very intense mindset, which can bring a lot of skills as well. So what kind of skills do you have? I like to think I'm a very logical, objective thinker, which can be very good to apply to things like maths and science, but I've learnt a way to kind of apply it to creativity, which is something that's never normally thought of. So one thing I've specifically got into recently since getting diagnosed with autism is making sure people are aware of that. So, you know, I've gone on to make sure I can do that in every area of my life. I do it at 100%. So what can you do if you feel like you might be autistic? The first thing that I did is I spoke to my mum about it. We had that conversation and my mum also thought, OK, yeah, maybe this is the direction we need to go in. Maybe we need to see if you are actually autistic. And from that, we went to the GP. So it can help to talk to a trusted adult. Yeah, definitely. It's great to be able to have that conversation to realise that it's not actually just all in your head and you can assess your behaviours from an outside point of view too. I know what I do, but it's different seeing you from the outside. So getting diagnosed could be overwhelming. What would you do to help that? First of all, you will have been diagnosed by a professional and they'll be able to help you in areas that you need help in. But and then it's also very much a personal thing. It's, oh, I've got this label now. And for me, it was a big relief. And I know a lot of people say that. Not everyone does. But to find out that you've now got a reason behind all these mysteries in your life can be, can be a very nice thing. You're a lot more aware of where your strengths are and where your weaknesses are. So then you can really identify the areas you struggle in and then question and go, actually, what can I do to help it now? And what can the people around me do to help me now? So for you, being diagnosed meant your life improved? Oh yeah, massively. Having that diagnosis then allows you to make the necessary adjustments at work or in education and just generally living your life. So how can you support somebody who's autistic? First of all, I think it's really good to just educate yourself about autism so you can learn a bit more about what's going on. Autism is one of the invisible disabilities. It means that on the surface, everything can look absolutely fine. It's good to understand it because and then you may have a better idea of how they are actually experiencing things. And if it was someone in your family, how can you support them? It's not like being autistic makes you completely excluded from day-to-day -day life. I, like, I like to go to concerts and stuff. It's about finding out how you can best support that person so they can still enjoy and live life. Thanks so much for coming here to see us today, Connor. Well, thank you for having me. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.